Okay, so we're just going to have a bit of fun with JavaScript today. I was asked by a client earlier. Um, they, they had a page on their site and they wanted to limit it being used just in one browser tab. So if it was opened, if this uh, page was open in a second or a third browser tab, um, it would cause some problems in their system. So anyways, I just took this as a programming challenge. Um, obviously, first tried to cheat looked online, uh, was seeing if anyone had something out there for this, and surprisingly I found nothing, not even Stack Overflow. So what the goal is here is we want to detect if the if a certain page or a website, it, it could be the whole domain, if it, we want to detect if it's being used in another browser tab. And if it is, um, that new browser tab, that second, third, or however many other tabs other than the first one, the website should be unusable on those and maybe we display an error or in my case um, I just made the page blank and I showed an error message which said um, you can only use this website uh, in one tab please close your tabs until you just have one tab remaining so that's just what I did okay so uh, to start this off I just grabbed these two functions right here from W3 schools they work really well uh, one is a helper to set a cookie and one is to get a cookie. Just grab that code off W3Schools. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. As well, I will leave a link to the, uh, the gist uh, where this code is hosted so you can just uh, steal my code if you want. Um, okay, so grab those helper functions, stick them in. And then um, the next thing I wanted to do was we didn't want to run this on every page on the site. If you do, then you don't need to add some code that I am highlighting right here. You can just uh, you can just omit this, but in this case, I wanted to check if we, they had this admin call center in the URL. If so, then the following JavaScript is going to run. Um, so if that's true, and we're on one of the call center pages, we are first going to set a listener for the. Uh, oops, let's go back to that. Let's search for unload. Okay, so we're we're first going to listen for this before unload or on before unload functions. Um, I'm just using jQuery here to help. You do not need to use jQuery. Um, just listen for these events. And when uh, when this event fires, which is the uh, tab being closed or the browser being closed, then what we're going to do is we're going to delete this cookie, which is called IC window ID. So IC is their app name and then window ID. So we are going to create an ID for the window in question. So each tab is a separate window, and then we're going to delete it. And the way you delete it is by setting the cookie to an expiry date in the past, which I set to um, to the epoch, to 1970, January 1. That's that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, we're going to run an interval. So every three seconds you can see right here 3000 milliseconds every three seconds we are going to call this validate call center tab function right here okay so let's see what's in the tab oh one important note is you need to um, you need to store the return value of set interval to a variable here because um, we are actually going to stop this at some point so if the new tab did open we're going to display um, we're going to delete all the content on the site so it's not usable and we're just showing you cannot have this website open in multiple tabs please close them until there's just one remaining and we're going to show that on the page and then we're going to clear the interval so end this uh, interval from iterating okay so let's get into this now this interval runs every three seconds so the cookie that you set for what I'm going to do, you need to set that to something longer. So I chose quite a long buffer. I chose 10 seconds. Um, I think the numbers I've chosen are pretty good. Um, so basically, this has to be longer. Okay, and you'll see why. Now, what I learned today is window.name is a special property. Because if you set a value for window.name, by default, when you load up any website, window.name won't have any value set to it. But this property is special because you can set a value to it, and then when you refresh the page, window.name persists, whereas some other properties on the window, um, they may not persist. And if you just set your own variables, you create your own global variable, those won't persist. But this one is special, it will persist. 
So if window not name is not set, then we are going to assign it a random string. I just chose to use math.random and then to string. Okay, it's important to make it into a string. So we set a value for window.name if it doesn't have it already. Okay, we give this browser tab a name. Next thing we want to check for two situations. One is we want to set, we want to check if this cookie that I'm going to set called IC window.id, if this doesn't exist. Okay, that means we're at the beginning of a loop, or we, you know we don't have this cookie set. So beginning of the script running, or if window.name is equal to this cookie name. If the second case happens, that means we are in a normal loop on the first browser tab. So we want to keep that going. So if it's a brand, if it's a brand new page load, or we are in the first browser tab which we check by checking window.name against this cookie value, then what we're going to do is we're going to keep setting that cookie again and again. We're going, to, uh, we're going to clobber the old value. So if it's not set, we're going to set it um, to window.name for 10 seconds. If it was already set, we are just going to clobber that value and we are going to give it a brand new 10 seconds so it never runs out. Okay. However, if you did cl close this browser tab, if you close the browser entirely. After 10 seconds, this cookie would be gone. So the next time you load up, it's a new session. Okay, so we have to set this cookie. And we keep we keep persisting um, the sort of successful state of the first tab by clobbering the value. Okay. Now if it happens that this cookie's value is not equal to window not name, that means we are in a new browser tab. This is how we check for a new browser tab. Because when the new browser tab is opened, second or third or whatever, math.random to string is going to be a different value. However, the cookie value is going to be the same because the cookie, the same cookie is persisted in the browser regardless of how many tabs are set. This cookie is shared across all these different tabs. So this is the key point on how we know if it's the first tab or not. Because the very first tab is going to set this cookie value. That is going to be shared across all the other tabs. So the, only, the way we can know if it's the first one is if this one is equal to window.name. So if it's not equal, then we know it's one of those, um, those extra tabs. Okay? If it's an extra tab, then we set this error message. You can't have this website open multiple tabs. Please close them until there's just one remaining. I clear out the entire website content and then I clear the loop. Uh, there's no reason to run it anymore. And then I just throw a JavaScript error for good measure. And that's it. That's how you can detect if a website is being used uh, in multiple tabs and how you can um, you can control things and you can allow a website only to be used in one tab and other tabs are going to be rendered unusable. Okay, thanks for listening. I'm going to leave this just in the, uh, in the description and have a good day.